For many people, when they think of engineering, they associate it with extreme difficulty, confusing concepts, and long hours. Probably because of all the engineering memes that we see. One of the most common ones I've seen is the one that shows you a triangle between sleep, good grades, and a social life, and asks you to choose only one if you study engineering. But I found with decent time management, I'm able to get all three and more. And I just want to preface this video before getting into the tips that just because one method works for one person doesn't necessarily mean it'll work for other people. And the reason I'm saying this is because in this video, I'm not giving like general and generic time management tips that you probably heard a thousand times. I'm talking about stuff that I've personally worked for me and helped me do well in school. The first time management tip I use is called today's spotlight. I started using this tip when I started becoming really frustrated with creating timetables because in the past what I used to do is create detailed schedules of everything in my day in terms of like 15 minute intervals. For example, wake up at 8.30 a.m., class from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., lunch from 12 p.m. to 12.45 p.m., tutorials from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m., workout from 3.30 to 4.30, job interview from 5 to 6, study and do problem sets from 6 to 9, and then from 9 to 11, sort of socialize, chill, relax, etc. At first glance, this timetable seems really productive, but what ends up happening is things will take longer than expected, and the tasks at the end of the day will just get neglected and never get done, and then I'll feel like it was an unproductive day. Instead, when planning my day, I break it down into three tasks. The first task is called the spotlight task and is the most important one that needs to get done for the day. The second and third task aren't necessarily as important but still need to get done. For example, on any given weekday, the first task and spotlight task could be finish my engineering biomechanics assignment and the second and third task could be something like workout or prepare for my job interview. When I use the spotlight method, it doesn't matter when, how, or where I get the tasks done as long as they just get done. The second time management tip I have is having a default mode. What that means is when I have absolutely nothing to do or have some extra free time, I have a default set of tasks that I go towards. For example, in school, uh, my default task would be to study. This comes in handy when I have like three random minutes in the day that I don't know what to do with. Usually these miscellaneous time slots are like 30 minutes here, 20 minutes over there, 15 minutes over here, and that eventually all adds up to like two hours in a day. So having this default mode was an absolute game changer for me because before what would usually happen is in those miscellaneous time slots throughout the day, I scroll through TikTok or watch some random YouTube videos. But instead now I spend them on doing problem set questions and studying. This particular time management tip is the reason why I was still able to maintain a social life in my engineering studies. This is because I used this time that would otherwise be wasted to study and then later on in the day I would have some free time that I could spend socializing, relaxing and you know hanging out with friends. Before I started doing this method I would always feel guilty for hanging out with friends or relaxing because I know that I should be studying or doing some kind of work. But now, knowing that I've done work in these miscellaneous time slots that would otherwise be wasted, I don't feel nearly as bad when I'm just relaxing or hanging out with friends. The third thing I implement is I create a wheel of priorities for myself. You see, the objective of time management is that I would do the things you want to do, but still give you time to do the things that you need to do. So, for example, this is what my wheel of priorities looks like at the moment. Get a full-time role working as a mechanical design engineer. Build my YouTube channel work out consistently, and train jujitsu. I found this really helped me with managing my time because when things come up that are outside of these four priorities, I will neglect them or only do them if the four priorities are met. I'll also make sure to update this wheel of priorities every three or four months if my goals change or my circumstances change. I always find that the work that I'm doing tends to fill the time span I allocate for it. For example, if I have a lab report due in a week, I'll procrastinate on it in a way such that it takes me a week to complete it. But if I only have two days to work on lab report, I will procrastinate very little just so I can get it done in those two days. So to prevent wasting time like this, I don't worry too much about start dates and end dates. Instead, I just focus on getting tasks that are of higher priority done first. But if you're the type of person that needs deadlines, then consider creating an artificial deadline for all the projects and tasks that you need to get done. Just make sure that these artificial deadlines are pretty ambitious because you'll be surprised on how little time it takes to actually complete some of these tasks. Even though I mentioned earlier using a daily spotlight, in general, I plan my time per week instead of per day. The reason I do that is because it gives me the illusion that I have more time. At the beginning of every week, I write down the three most important tasks for each day of the week, as well as a few other tasks that are pretty important and need to get done as well. But I'll make sure not to exceed like three to five tasks for each day of the week. And the reason I don't, for example, have like 10 to 15 tasks per day is because I'll usually get overwhelmed and I'll drown all the things that I have to do and eventually get nothing done if I have like 15 tasks in one day. 
Another thing to keep in mind is the difficulty of each task that you're doing. Usually if a task is pretty difficult, my brain will just procrastinate on it and I won't get it done because my brain just assumes it will somehow become easier in the future. A way I go around this is by asking myself for every task I write down, will this be stressful when I'm doing it? If the answer to that question is yes, then I'll break down that task into smaller, more manageable tasks. For example, let's say I write down the task of finish my dynamics problem set. Immediately that task stresses me out because that course is extremely confusing, so I'll break it down into three smaller tasks. First, have a look at the problem set and write down the things that confuse me the most. Second, ask my TAs or professor for clarification and things that confuse me. Third, complete as much as I can of the problem set. Each of these tasks individually aren't that stressful, so I'm able to get them done and procrastinate less than I would if I just wrote down finished dynamics problem set. Our brains like to do this thing where we start working at a nice time. For example, if we start working at 6.38 p.m., our brains would be like, you know what, just start working at 7. So instead what I do is that now I round up to the nearest 15 minute mark. So for example, if our brains like to start at a nice time and it's 6.38 p.m., I'll tell myself, you know what, start working at 6.45. Over 6.22, I'll tell myself to start working at 6.30. It's a small shift, but it makes a big difference at the end of the day because those small time increments add up. I can't make a time management video without talking about sleeping and siestas. There is this myth that engineering students don't sleep or that they get very little sleep. I want to let you know that that is not true at all. In my engineering undergrad, I have never slept for less than 6 hours a night, I have never done all-nighters, and I don't drink coffee. In order to make sure I manage my time well and that this part of the triangle always gets met, I follow these three rules. 1. Never sleep for less than 6 hours a night, 2 days in a row. For example, if I slept only 6 hours on Monday, I'll make sure to sleep at least 7.5 hours on Tuesday. 2. Sleep either 6, 7.5, or 9 hours a night. I've always heard the general rule that we should sleep 8 hours a night. But I've recently read this book that teaches you how you should sleep smarter and from it I've learned that our bodies cycle through 90 minutes intervals of sleep. So if you wake up in the middle of a 90 minute interval you will feel unrested which is what happens during 8 hours of sleep. But if you complete 4, 5 or 6 90 minute intervals of sleep you will feel much more rested when you wake up. Sleeping for 4 90 minute intervals is equivalent to 6 hours of sleep. Sleeping for 5 90 minute intervals is equivalent to 7.5 hours of sleep and sleeping for 6 90 minute intervals is equivalent to 9 hours of sleep. 3. Never underestimate the power of a siesta. Siesta just means nap in Spanish and napping can be key in helping you manage your time throughout the day. I used to do it all the time in my first year of engineering where I'd go to a few hours of class, come back home, take about an hour nap and then go back to class. At first, I thought I was being lazy for doing this, but sleep researchers have shown that humans are actually meant to take a mid-afternoon nap, mainly because it keeps you alert throughout the day and it'll boost your productivity. The general consensus from a ton of research I found on napping is that your nap should begin about 12 hours after the middle of the main period of your sleep. So for example, if you mainly slept from 12 a.m. to 6 a.m., your nap should begin on 3 p.m. I'm obsessed with saving time and doing as much as I can in the 24 hours I have in a day. I hope this video showed you that it's very much possible for engineering students to have a social life, get good grades, get enough sleep, and do whatever else they enjoy. There's this famous Arabic proverb about time management that goes like this, It literally means that time is like a sword, if you don't cut it, it will cut you. But more practically what it's saying is if you don't take advantage of your time, Time will take advantage of you by flying by and consuming your life. And it's for that reason I value time management so much. Anyways, I hope this video brought you value. If it did, please make sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace!